Hey guys, Mackie here with Ironside Ranch. Today, we are going to talk about this. So, first off, I hope it's okay that we're doing this at my workbench. I really just didn't feel like setting up the green screen today. Like I told you guys, we're so busy, I'm having trouble getting videos out. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, but this summer, we are just slammed. Uh, we've got some interesting things going on with this business that uh, I can't disclose yet, but I'll disclose in about a month or so, and I'll kind of explain why we're so slam busy right now. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, but anyways, um, what I wanted to talk about was the palm oil situation, right? So Economic Ninja did a video. I'm going to tag him in this because he did a video uh, just the other day, or actually earlier today, about palm oil. So he's got all the details over there. Go watch his video on palm oil. Here's the reason I, uh, that it's interesting. What he did this video on, he's talking about Indonesia and Malaysia now stopping their exports of palm oil, which together they make up like 70% of the world's exports of palm oil. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hell, I don't care. I don't eat palm oil. I don't regularly cook with palm oil. Uh, if I use palm oil for anything, it's, you know, that occasional whatever weird cuisine you want to try, some crazy dish that requires it, so you buy it in a little bottle that's that big, right? So we Americans don't do much with palm oil, right? We're typically using... Um, uh, olive oil we use, uh, or we generally we use olive oil or, um, what's the other one I'm blanking on the name of it, um, vegetable oil, right? So canola oil, something like that, um, or, you know, kind of for the health nuts, coconut oil, right? So that's what we as Americans use. Traditionally, what we used was exactly what this is, lard, right? So when I say lard, what am I talking about? I don't mean your Aunt Bethany's big fat ass. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about pig lard, right? So this comes from pigs. This is, there are different types of lard, generally like the desirable stuff for like baking lard is going to be the fat around the kidneys, uh, but as a general rule, when people make lard, they just take all the excess fat from the pig, you render it down, you get your lard, you get your cracklings, uh, which is what we do actually. We take, and most of our customers don't want the lard from their pig, so we take theirs back from the butcher as well, um, and we render all that down. So anybody that leaves it with the butcher, we just go pick it up and take all our lard back. Uh, I'm not just going to let the butcher throw it away. Um, and uh, so any of our customers that, that don't take theirs, we get, um, and we try to keep a year's worth of, of lard on hand at all times, and so, uh, and that's fairly easy to do because we, we raise pigs. But why am I bringing this up with the lard? Because, well, lard, pasture-raised lard is incredibly beneficial for you. It's got tons of vitamins, tons of nutrients. There's a lot of information about that that you guys can pick up. Uh, lard is not this horrible thing that people seem to think it is. Now, processed lard being a different entity entirely and stuff from commercial farms, CAFOs and stuff like that, it's not doesn't have any of the health benefits. It is pretty bad for you. But stuff that's raised on pasture, pasture-raised pork, uh, the, the, um, the, the amount of vitamins in the lard is, is, is really quite mind-boggling. But the great benefit of lard is lard preserves. And so uh, it's very easy to preserve. And in fact, lard itself is a preservative. And so uh, what do I mean by that? One of the old ways of preserving things like meats and stuff like that is you'd actually put lard over the top of it. When you water bath eggs, which we, um, I don't know if we've done that video yet. But I don't think we've, we haven't done the water bathing egg video yet, but that's coming. Uh, but one of the things that you can do is you can actually drizzle lard over the top of that. It keeps the water from evaporating off. as uh, the old way of doing it before they had like five gallon buckets with gamma seal lids. Okay, so sorry about that. I got a call. Um, I actually got bees coming down next week. Really cool. And we'll, we'll do our unboxing of that video and talk about that a little bit. So um, just more on my plate. Okay, so, so the lard. I, the, the reason that we like the lard is because the lard stores very well. Like we talked about, it, it was a preservative. It's used uh, for water bathing eggs. It's used for preserving meat. So it, in itself, it's just very naturally stable. As long as it's processed right, the one thing you got to make sure is you get all the water out of there. Um, and then ideally, they, they'll tell you to water bath it. Usually the lard is so hot when you that if you, if you hot seal it into the jars and hot load it into the jars, it's not really a big deal. Again, you can check the, what is it, the CDC or FDA, whichever government agency, three-letter agency, does the canning stuff. And they, they have their directions on there of the approved method for doing it. But uh, like I said, for us, we just, I heat the jars up, I sterilize the jars, and then we hot load the jar, the lard right into the jars. I put the lid on, as it cools, it seals, not a big deal. Uh, it's fairly simple. So that lard is really, really hot when we load it in there. Um, if you overcook the lard or you don't get it quite clean enough, you get more of a brown tinge to the lard. If you get a really nice processed lard, it will look very creamy white like that. This is what you want to use if you're doing any baking with it. Um, if you get it that it has a darker color, don't worry, it's not bad. Just use it for... Um, <clears throat> 
any type of cooking basically that you're doing like if you're frying meat or something like that anything that can have a little bit of a bacony flavor to it that's not going to hurt it so that's uh that's kind of how that works in there but uh that creamy color that's like pie crust things like that works really well but anyways we'll we'll talk about how to render lard um in another video i'll probably show you all a little bit more detail about it uh, i think we actually we may have already done that video but um, anyways, so rendering lard is not really a hard concept. You really just put a little bit of lard in a, in a pan, you boil it down uh, with no water. I don't, I don't usually do water. You can put a little bit of water at the beginning, but I usually don't. Um, and then until you have enough lard that you can start loading into your jars. And, uh, uh, but it's a great preservation method. Now, the reason this is important is because you have to have some fat in your diet. Uh, lard is the old-fashioned way of doing it. Uh, you can make things like pemmican and... Um, <clears throat> um, Sorry, we always call them ass cakes, but I'm trying to remember the name of it now. There's another, there's a hardtack. I think that's the, uh, uh, you can make pemmican and hardtack with it. And so uh, it's a great way of packing in calories very densely um, and making a, uh, some, some, some food for yourself. So that um, you have to have this oil. Now, as oils become harder and harder, it's going to be harder and harder to get healthier oils. Probably something like processed vegetable oil and stuff like that that's really bad for you um, is not going to astronomically be unavailable but um, unless we hit some really short times. Uh, but finding things that are healthier, that cook better, uh, that provide more calories and more vitamins is going to be harder. Uh, you know, our goal is to not have to buy vitamins, right? I want to be able to get all my vitamins from what I'm eating rather than to buy vitamins. It's a natural way that it should be, right? So that's kind of what, we're, what, what you're doing when you get rid of all this processed crap in your diet is you start adding it with things that are actually denser and in, in, in the vitamins for you. So bottom line is, is lard is a great supplement. If you go get with a local pig farmer, somebody that raises like we do, um, you can have them raise you a normal pig. You can even have them raise you a lard pig. Uh, we've done that before. Lard pigs, if you don't know lard pigs, you have a ton more fat around the outside. Not going to get near as much meat off of them, but off of a lard pig, you might get five gallons of fat off of it to, uh, to render down. So uh, you can get a lot of lard off of them. The old-fashioned pigs, before commercial pigs came into the mix, and really filled up the piggeries um, with this commercial breed that didn't have as much fat on it. You used to be able to get a ton of lard off of just a, uh, any, any pig that you would take to the butcher. It's not, that, not the case anymore. So when you raise a lard pig, you're gonna raise something like a Cooney Cooney pig that is traditionally a grass-fed pig, and you're gonna rotate them over, and you're gonna put them on something that's a lot more calorie dense, something like the ground sunflower seeds that we feed our pigs. A lot of people use grain, corn, etc. Um, corn's great too. Um, it, it used in moderation. I'm not saying we should be feeding them all corn, but uh, but but we want to get some calories on them, some carbohydrates, get that fat layer built up around them uh, to where the outside of their the, the outside layer of their body is nothing but lard. Then when you butcher them, you want to make sure and tell the butcher, I want the lard. If you don't tell the butcher that you want the lard beforehand, he may throw it out, um, and uh, because a lot of people don't take it, so you need to specify to him, I want the lard, and I want my lard back because my lard was raised on pasture pigs much healthier than what that lard is that you have right next to it in the other jar from that other pig because that other pig was raised in confinement and uh, it does not have near the nutritional density uh, that my lard does. So that's what you're looking to do. So get with a local pig farmer, uh, somebody like us, there's, there's plenty of us around, uh, but anybody that raises a couple pigs, if you have even an acre and a half, uh, you can raise pigs yourself. Pigs are very, very uh, uh, very hardy and they're easy to raise on a small plot of land. Uh, we're going to talk about that more. I got pigs coming, getting delivered here in 30 minutes, so I got to go get ready for that. We will talk to you all later. Uh, I'm going to get some footage of the pigs and uh, we will discuss how to raise some pigs for you.